So let's get right in. Let's imagine for a moment we need to cool a building down. Now we need to cool the building down because there's people inside. Maybe the building's made of glass and it's very sunny. So it's also going to get warmer during the day. And maybe they've got computers or a server room and that also generates heat. So all of this heat within a building, we need to get rid of it. And we're going to get rid of it using a cooling tower. Now normally you would use a refrigeration plant, often referred to as HVAC or a chiller. But just for simplicity's sake, let's imagine that we have a cooling tower with cooling water and that's all we're going to use to cool the building down. So let's have a look. The water from the building connects to these two top pipes here. And the water being supplied to the building comes from these two lower pipes here. So what we want to do is supply the building with cold water and we're going to get back warmer water because remember it's going to pick up some of that heat out of the building, it's going to carry the heat away and then we need to get rid of that heat and once we've got rid of the heat we can send the cooler water back again to the building and we'll continue this process in order that we can continually remove heat from the building. So let's follow that through a moment. We're going to be getting warmer water into these two pipes here. So let's just take a cross section. Okay, good. So the warmer water comes in through the pipe here and it's going to be distributed through these items, the blue items, which we call spray nozzles. Let me just go in a moment. So we can see the spray nozzles there. The water is going to shoot out the hole. It's going to impact onto this disc here and it's going to spread out into a sort of round circular pattern. And we're going to have a lot of sort of raindrops coming from this plate or a raining type of effect. And if we look down now, we can actually see a dark item and this is called the fill. And the water is going to land on the fill and it's going to trickle down into the holes. And we can see there's some holes here and the water is going to trickle down into those holes. So why are we doing that? Let me just zoom out for a moment. So let's just say, right, the water is spraying out of the nozzles into a spray pattern, loads of raindrops falling onto the fill, which is a heat exchanger. And then those raindrops are going to form a film of water, which means a, a thin layer of water all over the heat exchanger. So the cross-sectional area within that heat exchanger is very large. And there's a very good reason for this. What we're actually going to do in order to get rid of the heat that that water contains, we're going to draw air in from the bottom or from the bottom of the cooling tower. So the air is going to come in these sort of grooves here, often called louvres, and it's going to come in there and it's going to pass through and the air is going to then rush up through the heat exchanger and all the way up and past the spray nozzles, past something called the drift eliminator and out. Now the fan at the top here, that is what is causing this movement of air. The fan is going to be turning round and around, or perhaps the other way, and it's going to push the air through the cooling tower and out the top, or it's going to pull the air through the cooling tower and out the top. And we call this cooling tower an induced mechanical draft cooling tower. When we say induced, we mean that we're inducing a movement of air on the back side of the fan. So we're creating a negative pressure here within the cooling tower. The air is being drawn up through the bottom, through these grooves here, and it's passing up through the heat exchanger, through the nozzles, through the drift eliminator, and out the top. If we had the fan at the bottom of the cooling tower, let's just imagine that the fan was installed here on the entrance there, maybe a fan on the other side, and we were blowing air into the cooling tower, then we have a different effect. Then we have what's called forced draft. So forced draft means that you're forcing air across the heat exchanger in the cooling tower, and induced draft means that you're drawing air into the cooling tower across the heat exchanger, and then you're expelling it outwards. 
So that's what's creating the movement of air. That's the fan itself. So we know the water is coming out the nozzles. It's trickling onto the heat exchanger. Because of the shape of the heat exchanger, we're spreading the water out over a very large cross-sectional area. And this means that that water is coming into contact with the air. There's no point us sending a pipe full of water, a two inch pipe full of water down through the cooling tower. There's not much the air can do to cool it down. But by spreading it over such a large area, the air that comes into contact with the water is going to take away as much heat as possible in a short space of time as possible. And that's exactly what we want. That's our cooling effect, or at least one of them. So the air comes out the heat exchanger. The air is now warmer. The water that's dripped through the heat exchanger then drops to the bottom. And this water is now cooler. So the air has cooled it down. The water then, because it's cooler and is lying in the basin here or the reservoir, can then exit. It will be sucked out by pumps through these two pipes here. And we'll use that cool water to cool down our building again. Now the air... As it's left the heat exchanger, let's just zoom out here, it's going to flow past the nozzles and it's going to go through this item here, which is called a drift eliminator. Has a bit of a funky name, sounds a bit like the terminator. What it actually does is stop some of the water vapor leaving the cooling tower. Some of the water will have evaporated and this water mist, if we allow it just to pass out the top of the fan, we're actually going to lose over time quite a lot of water. So we'll have a drift eliminator, which is this item here. The water mist is going to come out here. The water vapor is going to pass through here. And you can see it's not allowed to travel straight out. And what's going to happen is it's going to travel up here. It's going to impinge upon this area, this bend, because it can't change direction very quickly. And when it impinges on this area, it's going to condense and then it's going to drip back down into the cooling tower and this way we can reduce our water losses because we don't want all the water flying up and out of the cooling tower we want to reduce that as much as possible so by having it impinge upon this black plate this drift eliminator we're going to save water and that water is going to drop back down into the reservoir so just remember water is not free it costs money so any sort of water loss is going to actually be a financial loss and that's not good so we recoup as much water as we can, and we'll do that with the drift eliminator. I should also mention here that the cooling tower actually has two ways of cooling. The first is that the water sprays out the nozzle and lands on the heat exchanger. The air then comes into contact with the water and takes the heat away. So it's fairly obvious there how the heat transfer occurs. What's not so obvious is that some of that water will also evaporate, and that also creates an additional cooling effect. Now think about when you sweat. The reason you sweat is because your body wants to put water on your skin and it wants to remove heat from your body because you're hot or you're warm, you're above average temperature. So the reason we sweat is the water accumulates on the top of our skin and then the air blows across our skin and takes away the water. And this creates a cooling effect because the water is evaporating and we feel cooler. And it's exactly the same in a cooling tower. With that water evaporating, we're getting an additional cooling effect. It might not be large, but it's still there. So anyway, that's how a induced mechanical draft cooling tower works. We know that induced now means that the air is drawn in from the bottom and drawn across the heat exchanger before it goes across the fan. And the mechanical part is simply referring to the motor and the fan itself. In a natural draft cooling tower, there are no mechanical fans, and hence why they're called natural draft cooling towers. I hope you found that informative and interesting. If you've got any questions or feedback, please do let me know. Thanks very much for your time.